Today, I'm going to be going through how we can take a look at covariance within Python. We're going to go through five different examples. The first one is going to be a manual calculation. Then we're going to take a look at both sample and population within NumPy, jump into Python pandas, and close out this video by taking a look at plotting a covariance matrix with the help of Seaborn and Matplotlib. But before we do that, I want to go over a little bit more information about covariance. So let's take a look at that. All right, so let's take a look at covariance in a little more detail and uh, also do a manual calculation. So covariance is a statistical measure that indicates the extent of which two random variables change together. The variables tend to increase or decrease in tandem. The covariance is positive. If one is increasing while the other one decreases, the covariance is negative. And if there's no pattern, you're going to have a covariance near zero. So I wanted to make a pretty easy example on this one. So suppose we have a data set with the heights and weights of a group of people. So a positive covariance would indicate that taller people tend to weigh more, which is true. Um, a negative covariance would indicate taller people tend to weigh less, which is not true. Uh, and also two terms to know, sample versus population. I've covered it in some of my other videos, but it does apply to covariance. So sample covariance is you're going to take your uh, amount of people in this case and subtract it by one. Whereas the population, you just have specific n and nothing with that. And you can take a look at the formula here to the bottom right. Uh, I'm going to explain this formula, so don't worry too much about it. So I wanted to take that example of height and weight and apply this to a problem so you guys can more visualize what is going on. So we have five different people in this data set. The heights range from 63 to 73, where the weight in pounds uh, going from 1 to 21 all the way to 165. Now, the first thing we want to do on this is find the mean of your height and weight. Those are those two columns we're going to be taking a look at the covariance on. So uh, height, 68.6, and the mean of weight, 148.4. All you do for the mean, add all these up, divide by the length, which is 5. Okay, next what we want to do is calculate each of the differences from the mean for each person. So person number one, right, they uh, height 63, our average is 68.6, so 63 minus 68.6. Height 121, the mean of the weight is 148.4, so subtract those. Person number two, height 67, subtract the 68.6, then 143 minus 148.4. So you're going to do this for every single person. Next, what you want to do is you want to multiply the differences from the mean for each person. So person one, negative 5.6 times negative 27.4. Person two, negative 1.6 times negative 5.4. You get the point. I'm not going to show all the calculations here for every single person. Next, what you want to do is you want to sum the products for each, for all the people, not each person, but uh, 153, 8, 2.2, 25, and 73, we get 262.8. Now, here's where the difference is. Do you want to look at specifically the population or sample? If you want to look at population, you just divide by 5 for 5 people. If you want to take a look at sample, uh, that is divide by 4 because you take n minus 1, and you can see you get two different results. Again, why it's important to define if you're taking a look at population or sample. So. Regardless, the covariance between height, inches, and weight in pound in this data set is 52.56 or 65.7. And this positive value suggests that as height increases, weight also tends to increase similar to the previous example. Okay, so now we know how we calculated the covariance manually um, with our height and weight example. I just wanted to show you guys real quick also before jumping into the code how a matrix looks. And I'm going to be taking a look specifically at sample so um, just there's just not enough room for our population. So here's how our sample covariance matrix looks like. Uh, we're going to have height by weight for each of these over here. And what's interesting is your top right and your bottom left is going to be your covariance of uh, your height and weight, right? Which we just went through that whole calculation. But what I find kind of interesting is if we go over here to the top left, right? Which is height by height. That's just the variance of H. If you go here to the bottom right, Weight by weight, that's just the variance of our weight. And I've covered variance in another video, but if you don't know how to calculate it, we'll just do a quick walkthrough on that side of things. So find your mean, right? For each of these, I found those means. Then take the sum of the squares and then just divide that um, by n minus 1. Again, we we're taking a look at sample, which is n minus 1. You can take a look at population with this just n, but again, specify what you are taking a look at on the variance side of things. So now that you know the basics of how covariance works, as well as the covariance matrix, I think it is time to code. 
So we're going to go through a few different examples now within Python. All right. So to start off the video, let's bring in some imports. So import numpy as np, import pandas as pd, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then import seaborn as sns. And once that is imported, we can get going on example number one. So let's take a look at example one, which is gonna be our manual calculation. So we'll just say manual calc and let's get going. So uh, for the first example, let's take a look at stock prices. So that's another pretty good use case on here. So we'll say stock A and stock B. And what I'm gonna do is just create a list of values. I'm gonna try to have them both increase at the same time. So uh, there's a little bit of numbers behind those. So let's think about this. Let's say 100, 104, 111, 123, and 145. And then for stock two, let's say we have 200, let's say 201, then we'll have 212, um, 211, and then 240. Well, let me actually make that. Yeah, I think that's fine. We'll say 212. Okay. So that's stock A and stock B. First thing we're gonna do is we wanna grab our length. So we're gonna say N equals our length. And you can grab either of these because they are the same length. So just grab one of them. Now we have our N in here. Okay, and now what we're gonna do, now we have the length, is we're gonna find our means. So we can say mean stock A, and then mean stock B. And all we have to do is sum these up. So sum and just put stock A in here. And then we're gonna divide it by N. And then literally just do the same thing for B. So just grab that and make sure it's just stock B, divide by N, and we should be good. Okay, now what we need to do is say diff product sum. We're gonna set this equal to zero. We're actually gonna create a for loop to calculate this. Then we're gonna say for I in range and pass in the length again. And then we're gonna say diff A equals stock A. We're gonna have the I elements. We're gonna subtract it from the mean. So mean A. Then we're gonna do the same thing for B. So just grab that. And it's actually gonna be mean stock A. I'll fix that in a second. Um, then we'll do the same thing with B over here. And then we're gonna say our diff product sum over here is gonna be plus equal. And then we're gonna have these two multiply. So A times our diff B. And let me just fix these real quick. It means stock A and it means stock B. Great. So all we're doing, range, right? So we're getting the differences for each element in stock A, right? We go across the board. We're taking that minus the mean, which we calculated above, which maybe we'll go over these means. I'll show you that in a second. Doing the same thing for B. And then we're adding to this diff product sum we're plus equaling, so whatever this is, plus whatever this is, right? E plus the initial amount over here, uh, diff A times diff B, which I showed you on the manual calculations. Uh, before I forget though, let me print these out so you guys can see what the means look like. And also we just confirmed we got them correct. So 116, which makes sense, right? And then let's just print this out over here. So print stock B, and we should get um, mean stock B, not just stock B. 213. Awesome. So we have that now. And lastly, all we have to do for our covariance, it really depends what covariance you want, whether they're population or sample. I'm just going to divide by the length on this one. So we'll say covariance manual equals, and just take this diff product sum divided by your length, right? And uh, we go to our next one, run that and print that. And uh, if you wanted to grab n minus one, literally all you have to do is go over here and put in parentheses n minus one like that. And then just print this out, print. And we have our covariance manual over here. Check out 283. Now we're gonna take a look at example number two, which is gonna be NumPy. And we're gonna look at the sample covariance. covariance. So let's grab that. The first thing we wanna do 
I'm just gonna set up X and Y this time instead of stocks. And we're just gonna use these numbers for the rest of the video. So let's say 1.9, then we'll grab 2.1, then we'll grab 3.6, then we'll grab 4.1, and then we'll grab 5.1. And then on our Y side of things, let's grab seven, let's grab 11, let's grab 13.4, let's grab 12, well not 12, let's do 14.7, and then 15.2, I'm good with those. All right, so now we have our X and our Y. Now, what we're gonna do on the NumPy side of things is we're gonna create a covariance matrix. So I already showed you a little bit of the covariance matrix in uh, the PowerPoint slides, but let's jump into here. So all we have to do, which makes the calculation way easier, right? Covariant matrix like this, and we're gonna say this is equal to np.cov like that and then just pass in X and Y over here. And if we wanna print this out, we will say print and just pass in this matrix. We can see 1.838, 11, and 4.11, and 4.11. So your covariance is gonna be 4.11, that's 5.5 five over there. But if you wanna specify that exactly, and you can just say cove X, Y equals, and then you're just gonna grab your cove matrix and then just pass in zero one. And that will grab one of the 4.11s. And if we wanna print that out, print like that. And we have that. And this was our sample. So literally just a few lines of code essentially too, right? Get the matrix and then grab one of the 4.11s. And uh, just like that, we have the correct answer. So. Let's take a look at the population now. So we'll just grab that and change this to pop. Now, pop, really not much changes. So where this changes is where you have this NP, right? So just go over here and do DDOF equals zero. And once you have that, you'll have uh, your matrix. So print this out. And all you gotta do this time the same way we did last time, right? So uh, go over here, grab that. And I guess I should have labeled the variables different. It doesn't really matter because it's a tutorial, but I'll just print this out and show you. Now we get 3.29. So much, much easier in my opinion than just doing this uh, super manual calculation. So now let's take a look at example four, which is gonna be pandas. And this is gonna take a look at sample. Um, that's their default, so we'll go through that. So this time, I'm just gonna set our data equal to a uh, dictionary over here, and we'll have X and we'll have Y, so we'll just grab those. And I'm literally just gonna grab our two lists that we have over here and just populate those. So let me just do that really quick. And we'll just grab those like that. And I just gotta put a comma here at the end and we are set. Awesome. So we have those over here for our data. Now I'm just gonna create a basic data frame. So df equals pd.dataframe. Just pass in your data like that. Okay, and now all you have to do for your covariance, just say cove df equals, and then you just do df.cove like this. And again, it's your sample. So just remember that when you're going into this calculation. And all you have to do is print this out. So print out, and once again, right, we get this matrix. We have 4.11 over here. So we have to specify that specifically. So easy way to do that, cove xy like this. We're gonna say that's equal to, and cove df lock, and then just go over here and grab x, y, Okay, and now all we have to do is print out this cove xy over here and 4.11549, which is awesome. We got it correct again, it's down over here. Now, lastly, what I wanna do is just show you how we can plot this really quick. So example five, plotting covariance matrix. All right, so example five, plotting covariance matrix. What I'm gonna do first is show you which covariance matrix we're gonna be plotting. So we're gonna be plotting this one over here, the 1.47, 3.29, 9.03, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4.11, 4
which is right over here, right? Our second example, NumPy pop. So let's take a look at that. Uh, a few lines of code. So plt dot figure and then put fig size equals and then just grab eight and six. Very popular fig size that's used. Then do a heat map, heat map like this. Pass in this covariance matrix. Go so grab that. Annotate. So annotate equals true. Then we're going to say cmap equals and then put cool warm. And then lastly on here, we're going to say fmt equals and then that's our formatting 0.2f. And that's just essentially how we round this at the very end. And lastly, we need to set our title. So plt.title covariance matrix, covariance matrix, and then just show this at the end, plt.show. And just like this, we should get our matrix. So yeah, look at that, 3.29147, 3.29 and 9.03, looks correct. So just to kind of reiterate how we did this, I use NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn, manual calc, right? First, find the length, then find the mean for each of those for here, for the stocks, right? And then I just created a for loop for I and range, which is the length. We find our differences for each of these, right? Stock I right here, grab those. And then we just add equals, or we just keep adding to this differential sum product, uh, the difference between A and B each time going around. Then at the very end, right, all I did is take that sum divide by N, or if you want to go the other way, take it divided by N minus one. Then on the sample side of things, that's the default for NumPy. So just say NPCove, pass in your two lists, which I have X and Y, and then we get our matrix. And if you want to grab that value, grab the matrix zero, one. Next, we took a look at another one over here for NumPy. And uh, if you want to grab the pop, you do a DDOF of zero. Same exact thing, zero, one, and it prints that out. Actually, this number is off. This should be example three, not two. Uh, then I did a pandas over here. So data, I just set this up into a dictionary X and Y, pass this into a data frame with pd.data frame. And then with data frames, you have to do just dot cove like that. And then you get cove df, grab that, right? We get that. And lastly, just plotting, I grabbed the latest NumPy one, which is over here, this population covariance and uh, UC born. And now we have this nice little chart. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you found a little bit of value in here, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm uploading at least three different data science videos every single week here, uh, because one of my goals is to scale this channel to 100,000 subscribers in 2025. Pretty lofty goal, but I want to hit that. Now, if you want to learn even more about statistics within data science, I have a few videos linked down below in the description, as well as a playlist right over here. So make sure to check those out and continue your education.